morning, lovelies. Zoe Tudor here with some more Pokemon Go goodness for you. And today we are talking the December Community Day, which, as many people actually speculated and guessed correctly, it is a combination of all previous uh, Community Day Pokemon. I'm essentially a Community Day weekend we're getting. We're getting a full Friday through to Sunday event, which is insanity. And I also want to talk to you guys about uh, my past experiences with the, you know, almost 12 months now of Community Day uh, experiences in the Asia Pacific. There's always been a lot of miscommunication and misunderstanding about what happens in the Asia Pacific region. You guys know that we get bugs a heck of a lot of times, but there's a lot of stuff I need to clear up. Uh, and I thought while we're doing that, we can go through my shinies as well. But first, let's talk about this December's Community Day. So starting on Friday the 30th of November to the 2nd of uh, December, time zones variant, please check the link in the description for your time zone. We're going to be seeing the spawns of every Pokemon that has come out in a community day. So we're talking Pikachu, Dratini, uh, Bulbasaur, Squirtle, Charmander, Eevee, Beldum, Chikorita, Larvitar, Mareep. Is that all of them? Cyndaquil? Did I say Cyndaquil? All of these guys. These guys will all be spawning across that weekend, which is pretty crazy. So if you missed a community day, if you were overseas on holiday and you missed the time zone if you were just not playing the game uh, when these ones were out, now is your chance to get them as a shiny. Also, special moves that were available during these community days will be available again. Massive, massive prep here. If you have got a decent Tyranitar, Smackdown Stone Edge, amazing move set. Save up for this community day because you'll be able to evolve and get any of the previous special moves that were featured on community days for those evolved Pokemon. So the wording in the announcement is a little bit different as well and the way that I take it is that these Pokemon will be spawning over the three days but then there'll be the bonus window of still like a three hour community day. So we're not going to be having the extra bonuses like XP and Stardust for the full weekend. That will be, I believe, from what I'm reading, contained to a three hour window depending on your time zone. So, so the bonuses in that three hour window will be double catch Stardust, double catch XP and double incubator effectivity. So. Keep your eyes out, check the link in the description for your specific time zone for that bonus. And from the looks of what, if I'm if I'm getting my time zones right, I'm not getting totally confused myself, it looks like the spawns for everything will be starting at the exact same time worldwide, everyone gets it on the dot, all these spawns increase. But for the bonuses, for the catch bonus and the stardust bonus and the incubator bonus, it looks like for the first time Asia Pacific isn't going to be the first region to get those bonuses if I'm working out my time zones correctly. Looks like because of the dates that are currently in there, rather than everyone getting the bonuses, you know, on Saturday at midday in their respective time zones. So for example, Australia would get it Saturday midday, and then it would take a full, you know, time zone difference for, you know, USA to get it at midday their Saturday. It's actually written in the description here that uh, Asia Pacific is gonna be getting uh, the bonuses on the second, whereas the USA will be getting it USA and Europe will be getting their bonuses on the 1st, which kind of like shifts the time zone parameters a little bit. I hope I'm explaining that kind of right. So rather than everyone, you know, getting it at midday on the Saturday or midday on whatever the Saturday haps, happens to be, it's going to be kind of shifted to be a combination of, you know, the Saturday, Sunday. So again, guys, please check the times for your area. Link is in the description. So let's talk the previous community days. Uh, in Pokemon Go, and there's always kind of been this thing where Asia Pacific gets the brunt of the bugs, and generally we do, but there's this misconception that every single community day has been terrible or full of bugs, or why well, can't I aim to get it right? It's been 12 months now, and that's not the case. It has not been 12 straight months of bugs. There's been a variety of different things, uh, and I made this fun little infographic a little while ago to kind of tell people and explain like what my experience was with Com Day. So of course I can't speak for every person in every region, but this is my experience with a combination of Australian rural, Australian CBD and ultra like high density living uh, and a comp day in Japan as well. So let's go through them all. So let's jump into the phone as well and we'll scroll through the shiny and com day experiences together. So first of all was Pikachu in January. Keep in mind as well guys, if there is a difference between what I say I caught and what you see on screen, I have traded some of these shinies. I have transferred some to Pokemon Let's Go. So that might be why there's a, a difference in what you see. But Pikachu day was Perfect, perfectly smooth. It was the first ever community day and most people around the world were expecting just to kind of exploit the double XP and go, you know, grind some raids and things like that. And Asia Pacific was the first region to confirm, hey, we got shinies. This is one of our, you know, first abundantly spawning shinies ever. 
Uh, and Pikachu Day went off without a hitch. Everyone got a couple of shinies. We kind of estimated the rate to be 1 in 25, and that kind of seems to be what has stuck going forward with our Community Day. So, perfectly lovely January Community Day. I caught three. Next up was February for Dratini Community Day. So, this one was the first one that we got errors for essentially. So we had about one hour of broken gameplay in my experience. Uh, during that time as well the dust bonus was not calculating so even though we could kind of catch certain things uh, for the entire three hour window I believe until there was the extension uh, dust bonus was not calculating so everything we were catching was not getting the extra dust, our items weren't working, uh, we like couldn't actually tap to click and play so we couldn't really make use of those items either. We had one hour of broken gameplay and a three hour extension uh, which is pretty extreme. February is the middle of summer for where I am, so it was absolutely stinking hot for play. So it was just crazy, crazy. Uh, during this uh, comm day, I caught five during regular time and two in the overtime extension. After that was March with Bulbasaur. So Bulbasaur, again, smooth. A smooth community day. So we went from smooth, bugs, smooth. Uh, nothing too eventful, really. Bulbasaur was what it was. I ended up catching 12. <laughs> 12 uh, Bulbasaurs during regular time and there was no extension, so uh, as you can see I've transferred or traded quite a few of those, but a very successful comm day nonetheless. You can kind of start to see the difference here as we go through these as well. Uh, the difference between days that had bugs and days that were completely smooth for the amount and quantity of things caught for shiny. After that was Marif Community Day, so for Marif I was actually in Kyoto, Japan, um, and this was an unusual one for me. I wasn't I wasn't aware of what to expect of the spawns at the park that I was at, but I was in touch with a local group there who said that uh, what we experienced was not normal. <laughs> the first uh, 45 minutes of the event, there were no Maripon sightings at all. Uh, and during the first hour, in that last 15 minutes of the first hour, I managed to find one Marie, but like a stop down the way, but it wasn't popping on the nearby and someone had to you know, tell me it was there. It was very peculiar. There was no communication either about whether there'd been an extension until right as uh, the event ended, there was a tweet saying it had been extended. So I was catching a shiny Mareep right as the time was ticking over. And I was like, well, it's going to convert back to a regular one because you guys know, and if you don't know, now you will know. If you catch a shiny right as the event ends, it will, and if you don't touch the ball onto the shiny before the clock ticks over to the final minute, it will revert back to a regular instead of being a shiny. So when I actually caught that Maripa and it stayed shiny, I was suspicious that there might have been an extension and we got lucky and got one hour extension, which means I managed to get my three squeezed in. So technically, if it wasn't for that extension, I would have lost that one. So I caught one in regular time and two in overtime. Uh, and it was a very peculiar event as well because Marip were not spawning in abundance, we had to walk very, very far to go and actually try and find Mareeps on nearbys, um, trekking up half the side of a mountain-ish uh, to particular pokey stops to just even get one or two Mareeps spawning there and then another 10 minute walk back to another pokey stop. They were not spawning on paths, they were not increased um, what, like what they should have been. Towards the end, um, in the extended hour, probably in the last 30 minutes was when we saw stuff actually start up, like clustering, uh, like what you typically expect for a comm day. The next one after that was May, which was Charmander Day, which was smooth. So this one I actually played rural-ish, semi-rural, uh, and it wasn't the best spot, again, for finding Charmander. So this was not no fault of, you know, Niantic or servers or bugs or anything like that. I was just in a more rural spot. I also had one of my shinies flee in AR mode because I was under the... This was the time when they announced, hey, Pokemon can't flee in AR photo mode anymore. Yes, they can if they despawn. So I lost a shiny to the despawn bug in AR photo mode. I've now since learnt uh, the parameters of photographing lured or incensed Pokemon, and I get in and out really quick. But there was no extension, no need for an extension, and I caught four shiny Pokemon on this one. And I also managed to get my last shiny in the last four seconds of the event. As I was saying before, I it doesn't click over in time. You're stuffed, basically. I managed to get my last shiny Charmander in the last four seconds of the event, which was tense. June was Larvitar Day, and June had probably the worst bugs for my area, back in Newcastle for this one. I caught one Larvitar in the first three hours, and then I managed to scrape in another one uh, in the extension, and I happened to go plus on the one on the drive home, right at the end. So three total, 
two in overtime. This one was probably our worst uh, issues of errors so far going through. Couldn't tap on Pokemon, couldn't check them. Uh, Pokemon wouldn't load. We were just seeing uh, no Poke stops, no spawns. You could maybe then see the spawns. It'd be tapping on, tapping on, tapping on. It was waiting, 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 and it wouldn't encounter. Uh, lots of error, 22 error, network network error, things like that. So a very frustrating Larvitar day. But I managed to get the three, so at least I've got one of each. I'm definitely going to be focusing on Larvitars coming in December as well. It's one I'm going to be focusing on pretty hard. After that was July, and that was Squirtle Day. And Squirtle was perfect. Absolutely no bugs or glitches or hiccups in my area, again in Newcastle. This one uh, was, I think some people get confused and say, oh, there was massive bugs in Japan because it was cancelled. But Squirtle Day was actually postponed or cancelled in Japan because of uh, actual real world natural disasters. So I think the typhoons uh, and floods were happening in Japan. So this one was postponed along with Articuno raids due to the um, typhoons. So not due to bugs. This one, for me at least, in Australia and from what I could see online, Squirtle went smooth. And it shows in the amount of spawns as well uh, in shinies. 12 shinies. Easy done. Cleaned up. After that is August, which was Eevee. Again, two days of perfection. Two back-to-back -back days, Eevee spawns, no bugs whatsoever. Smooth. Absolutely smooth. The first day we did notice that spawns were a bit light. Uh, they weren't as clustered and dense as usual, but they certainly weren't sparse, uh, and we certainly still cleaned up. So 15 shinies total for me on Eevee day, no extension needed. After that was Chikorita day. So Chikorita for me, I was rural once again. I managed to catch four with only about an hour and a half of gameplay. Uh, I was rural for a wedding, like ultra rural. Thankfully, there was a park nearby that had plenty of stops, and I was managed to, you know, catch all of my shinies. Uh, within that first hour and a half time window, but the only glitch that we had was about a five minute blackout, a uh, five minute dip in connection where it was just like network error. Okay, I'm gonna restart and just wait. We were streaming it at the time as well, so you guys can always go back and watch that for proof if you need it. But um, it was perfectly smooth otherwise, and I had no reports um, for other Australians experiencing any issues with Chikorita. October was Beldum Day, and this one I would categorize as one of my, personally, my best and smoothest community days. I was in Sydney in the Botanic Gardens, ultra high density spawns, amazing, amazing smooth experience. I had no, I think we yeah, had a five minute blip, if that, if it was even five minutes. And we just took some photos together and stuff. But this was undoubtedly the worst bugs and errors com day for the Asia Pacific region total. I was the outlier for having a good experience. Japan had three hours of nothing. Just seeing their person standing on the map, no spawns, no stops, no lures would work, no items would work. I believe Singapore, Korea, and uh, Indonesia experienced around two hours of issues. Uh, New Zealand as well, some people reported one to two hours of issues. And even Melbourne and some other parts in Sydney uh, had about 40 minutes of issues, like not being able to see anything. It was just nothing. No Pokemon, no stops. So Metagross uh, and Beldum Day actually got redone as a second day. So I was dealing with the conflict of, I had a perfect day, do I play the second day? Uh, and we as a community decided that, yeah, I kind of should, why not? Um, and I decided to evolve every single one of those shinies up to Metagross so that anyone who did miss out, anyone who couldn't play either of the events, anyone overseas even who couldn't get a shiny would be able to hopefully one day trade from me uh, and will have the special move there, which is the best steel type move in the game and a shiny Metagross. So these are all being saved for trade, essentially very expensive trades, but all in all on the first day I caught eight and on the replacement day I caught 12. So cleaned up, absolutely cleaned up, but I wanna use these Metagross for good. I'm not trying to be selfish and flex on having that many Metagross. There's no point for me to have that many. Um, I want them to go to people that haven't, didn't get a chance to get them essentially. And lastly was Cyndaquil day. This one was a bit of a bummer. We had an hour and a half of massive bugs, very similar to the Lavatar day. Tapping on stuff, nothing would spawn, uh, nothing would encounter, sorry. Um, not being able to shiny check because nothing could be encountered, items not working or items being wasted because, you know, they're running, the clock's running on those items and you can't tap on anything and you just want to check. They don't even want to catch, you know, even quest reward stacks couldn't be caught through. My goal for Cyndaquil Day was to just, you know, clear through my stack and just clear out a whole bunch of, um, basically get as much status as I could. But the really disappointing thing was just the mood. The energy was so, so low for this one. 
um, I think everyone's just kind of done and over the bugs. Uh, even though it hasn't been every single one, we haven't had every single one having bugs by any means. It does get frustrating, it gets exhausting. Uh, I really feel as well for the New Zealand time zone because Cyndaquil got extended, but that meant that people were playing till 9 p.m. at night if they wanted to take advantage of the extension. How many kids are allowed to stay up that late if they're like children players? People with families as well, or adults with children, even if it's just the adults playing, you've got a commitment to go home and feed your kids essentially. Because of the time zone difference at the moment, their comm day starts so late as it is. If there's an extension, I would be absolutely wrecked trying to play till nine o'clock at night if you're only expecting to be out for three hours. But then all of a sudden, you know, everything's been extended by two hours, you haven't had dinner yet, or you've made dinner plans with your community group and that's been all thrown in the air because of an extension. And don't get me wrong, I certainly appreciate the extension to compensate for the fact that we weren't able to play, but it doesn't really solve the root issue of eliminating the bug. What is the issue that is causing so much strain on the servers or so much uh, error and lag and inconsistency uh, when these comp days happen? Is it the server load? Is it the amount of players? Is it spoofers coming to that region as well so they can play all three regions? Is it because of the population? Is it because of something in the code for time zone specific limiting? Because when we have crazy events go live worldwide, we don't experience any of these issues when every single player gets the game at the exact same time. And I know that you know, half the world's asleep during that time, but when everyone gets it, for example, when something is launched, uh, at, you know, 1 p.m. PST. That's not too crazy to think that, you know, Australia and Asia Pacific are waking up. We're already, you know, awake for the day. You guys are awake in the afternoon. That's a lot of players. But we don't have the exact same amount of bugs. What is causing the strain on the servers? Is it something to do with coding for limiting spawns to a region? Is it humans? Or is it something else we don't know about? And how can we help address and fix that? Thankfully, this December community day is going to be across a whole weekend in terms of the spawns. So if something goes wrong, we've got at least three days of stuff to do it. It's being released worldwide at the same time. So that'll be interesting. <laughs> and in terms of the bonuses, it looks like the bonus window starts uh, for America first. So, hey, if there's errors, you guys get to try it out first. But I honestly, I don't think there will be. I think if it is something to do with strain and server load because everyone's going to be playing and catching across the whole weekend, load will be increased anyway. Uh, and I mean, we'll see. If it's just, and if it's just the bonus is being dropped for that three hour window, I can't see that specifically being the thing that puts a maximum amount of strain on the servers. But who knows? I don't make the game. So I hope this little video has been insightful for you for our year, my year in Shinies and in community days and what's been going on in my region. Personally, for the December comm day, I think I'm going to focus on Lavatars because I missed out on those a lot. And I would like a few extra Lavatars to use for Smackdown Stone Edge, maybe even some Bite Crunch Shinies, that'd be kind of cool. I want to focus on a couple of Mareeps because of the low number of Mareeps that I did get. And I also want to check out some Eevees so that I can transfer some more shiny Eevees into uh, Pokemon Let's Go. And then also stock up and save for when next uh, generations of Eevees are coming out in the game for Leafeon uh, and Glaceon and Sylveon. So yeah. What are you most excited for for the upcoming December community days? Which Pokemon are you going to be focusing on? Did you miss a comm day and you're finally going to get one that you need? Let me know in the comments down below what you're going to be targeting. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful morning, noon, night, whatever time it is for you. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.